Hello, royal folks. It's good to see you all here again. This is your regular dose of royal news and analysis. But before we start, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon. Thanks. So now, before we dive into this deliciously dramatic debacle, let's take a moment to appreciate the sheer irony of it all. Here we have Harry and Meghan, who fled the confines of Buckingham Palace in search of freedom and financial independence, only to find themselves potentially losing their California castle to the very system they thought would liberate them. Oh, the sweet, sweet irony. It's enough to make even the Queen's corgis chuckle. So what's the scoop? Well, it seems our dynamic duo has managed to rack up a £400,000 fine. That's right, folks. £400,000. To put that in perspective, that's about 133,333 avocado toasts or 40,000 organic oat milk lats. Now that's what I call a royal bill. But what could they possibly have done to warrant such a hefty fine, you ask? Well, apparently, it all started with a little drone drama. Yes, you heard that right. Drones. It seems the Sussexes, in their infinite wisdom, thought it would be a splendid idea to use drones to take unauthorized photos of their neighbors' properties, because nothing says, we came here for privacy, quite like invading everyone else's, right? Now, I don't know about you, but if I move to a swanky neighborhood to escape the paparazzi, the last thing I'd do is become the paparazzi. But then again, I'm not a former royal with a Netflix deal, and a point to prove. Maybe this is just some avant-garde form of method acting for their next documentary, Life Through the Lens, a royal perspective on privacy invasion, coming soon to a streaming service near you. But wait, it gets better. This drone debacle was apparently just the tip of the iceberg. It seems our dynamic duo has been ruffling more feathers in Montecito than a flock of peacocks at a pillow factory. Noise complaints, paparazzi problems, you name it. The Sussexes have managed to tick off their neighbors in more ways than one. One longtime Montecito resident, Emily Sinclair, was quoted as saying, They just don't seem to understand that Montecito is a quiet, close-knit community where people value their privacy. Well, Emily, I hate to break it to you, but when you have neighbors who once lived in actual palaces, quiet and close-knit might not be in their vocabulary. They're probably still trying to figure out how to operate without a staff of 50 at their beck and call. But here's where it gets really juicy. The bank, it seems, has had enough of these royal shenanigans. They're not just wagging their finger and saying, bad duke, bad duchess. Oh no, they're bringing out the big guns. They're talking about seizing the Sussex's mansion. That's right, folks. Harry and Meghan might be getting the royal boot from their own castle. Can you imagine? The couple that was too good for Frogmore Cottage might soon be looking for a new lily pad to hop to. Maybe they can crash with Oprah. I hear she has a guest house or twelve. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. But they're rich. They can just pay the fine. Well, my dear viewers, it's not quite that simple. You see, our favorite former royals might be facing a little cash flow problem. Turns out, all those tell-all books and Netflix deals might not be the golden goose they thought they'd be. Financial analyst Robert Whittaker warns that if they continue to rack up these violations, it could very well lead to bankruptcy. Bankruptcy. Can you imagine? From the House of Windsor to the House of Chapter 11, it's like a modern-day fairy tale, only instead of rags to riches, it's riches to rags, to slightly less expensive rags. But let's take a step back for a moment and look at the bigger picture. How did we get here? How did the couple that was supposed to modernize the monarchy end up as the most controversial neighbors in California since the Kardashians discovered contouring? Well, it all goes back to that fateful decision to step down from royal duties. They wanted freedom, they said. They wanted privacy, they claimed. They wanted to make their own money, they insisted. And now, well, now they got freedom all right. The freedom to face the consequences of their actions without the protective bubble of the royal family. They've got privacy too, so much privacy that they apparently need drones to see what's going on next door. And as for making their own money? Well, they're certainly racking up bills like pros. So I guess you could say they're succeeding, just maybe not in the way they intended.
But here's the real kicker in all of this. While Harry and Meghan are busy playing drone wars with their neighbors, the rest of the royal family is carrying on with business as usual. King Charles is doing his kingly duties, William and Kate are raising their kids and preparing for their future roles, and even Prince Andrew has managed to keep a lower profile, though that's a pretty low bar, let's be honest. Meanwhile, Harry and Meghan are out here turning their dream of a peaceful life in California into a nightmare of fines, feuds, and potential foreclosure. It's like watching a car crash in slow motion. Only the car is a Rolls Royce, and it's crashing into a pile of avocado toast. But you know what? Part of me can't help but feel a twinge of sympathy for them. I mean, imagine going from a life where your every need is catered to, to suddenly having to navigate the murky waters of California real estate law and neighborhood associations. It's got to be a culture shock, right? Then again, most people manage to move to new neighborhoods without causing an international incident. So maybe my sympathy should be reserved for their poor neighbors, who probably thought they were getting some A-list celebrities to boost their property values, and instead got the royal equivalent of the neighbors from hell. And let's not forget the impact this could have on their brand. Harry and Meghan have been trying so hard to position themselves as voices for change, as philanthropists, as people who care about the little guy. But it's hard to maintain that image when you're getting fined for invading your neighbor's privacy and potentially facing bankruptcy. It's like they're starring in their own reality show, only instead of keeping up with the Kardashians, it's keeping up with the catastrophes. And let me tell you, it's riveting television. Who needs Netflix when you've got this drama playing out in real time? But here's the million dollar question, or in this case, the 400,000 pounds question. What happens next? Will Harry and Meghan swallow their pride, pay the fine, and try to make amends with their neighbors? Will they pack up their organic, ethically sourced bags and find a new place to call home? Or will they dig in their heels and fight this to the bitter end? Personally, my money's on option three. These two have shown time and time again that they're not afraid of a little or a lot of controversy. They've taken on the British monarchy, the tabloid press, and now apparently the entire town of Montecito. What's a little bankruptcy between friends, right? But jokes aside, this situation does raise some serious questions. Questions about privacy, about the price of fame, about the challenges of starting over in a new country. It's easy to laugh at Harry and Meghan's misfortunes, but at the end of the day, they're still human beings trying to figure out their place in the world. Of course, most human beings manage to do that without racking up 400,000 pounds in fines, but hey, nobody's perfect. So what's the takeaway from all this? Well, for one, maybe we should all be a little more careful about where we fly our drones. For another, perhaps it's time for Harry and Meghan to take a good hard look at their choices and ask themselves if this is really the life they want. Because let's be real, if they end up losing their mansion and facing bankruptcy, it's going to be pretty hard to maintain that image of successful independent ex-royals. They might find themselves longing for the days when their biggest worry was which tiara to wear to the next state dinner. But who knows? Maybe this will be the wake-up call they need. Maybe they'll realize that true freedom and independence come with responsibilities and consequences. Maybe they'll learn to be better neighbors, better citizens, better people. Or maybe they'll just move to another fancy neighborhood and start the whole cycle over again. After all, third time's the charm, right? In the meantime, I'll be here, watching this royal drama unfold with a bucket of popcorn and a healthy dose of skepticism. Because if there's one thing we've learned from the Sussex saga, it's that just when you think you've seen it all, they'll find a way to surprise you. So buckle up, folks. The ride's not over yet. In fact, I have a feeling it's just getting started, and who knows, maybe next week we'll be talking about Harry and Meghan's new reality show, Royals in the Real World, Montecito Edition. Now that's something I'd pay to see. Until then thanks for watching, we'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family, thank you.